Hey guys, this is me, Hamza6951 and uh, sorry guys, I have not been making videos for a long time because uh, I just completed my second year at university but now I'm back for four months so I'll be making more videos uh, Today we're going to make something uh, using shift registers It's a very fun project and you guys will enjoy it a lot I'll talk about how it works and you know, I'll show you the circuit diagrams and we'll go through it together uh, One more thing that I forgot to mention is uh, for this project you need some basic level of electronics uh, because we're also going to use the LM555 timer chip to make uh, the clock for the circuit. So yeah guys, that's it. I'm pretty sure it's already easy and you guys will get it. So, you know, let's Alright guys, let's now look at the circuit diagram. If you can see the pin output of the 55, uh, 595 uh, uh, IC integrated chip, you can see that it has the 8 outputs from QA to QH. These are the 8 outputs where the LEDs are connected. VCC is plus 5 volts and GND is ground pinned ground pin and QH uh, comma or you know as they say complement pin 9 this is basically not uh, QH uh, the pins OE is enabled it's right uh, it's not right now that means not enabled so if you give it a zero the whole chip will be enabled if the chip is disabled that means it's not enabled the outputs do not show the clock the SR uh, clock is a serial clock and the SR clear is uh, clear for the circuit if clear is 1 it will the circuit will run and if clear is zero it will reset all the outputs to zero so yeah guys and uh, serial pin 14 that's the serial input that's where you give it the input and RCLK and SRCLK they are connected together because RCLK copies the input and puts it into the clock and as you can see that you know guys uh, that I have used uh, two shift registers so basically pin 7 of the Second shift register is the least significant bit and pin 1 of the first uh, shift register is the most significant bit and that's how the circuit works. Now guys we're going to talk something about uh, the shift registers and how they're actually made. So for example, uh, I mean what's inside a shift register. So shift register basically consists of uh, D flip flops. Here I have made a small uh, circuit diagram and this is basically showing a 4 bit shift register. One of the box, one box is one D flip flop. If you look at the state equation of the D flip flop, it shows you that whatever you give it the input, whatever input you give it, it will just output the same uh, input that you gave it after each clock cycle. So, for example, if you want to load 0110 into the ship registers, this is how many clock cycles it will take to uh, add 0110 into the ship registers. So this is basically a 4-bit shift register and this diagram basically sh uh, it's showing you that 0110 is loaded into the shift register after the 4th clock cycle. And this is the second part of our circuit which acts as a Johnson counter. So this is basically a Johnson counter. This is when the least significant bit uh, on our circuit, the shift register on the right, if pin 9 of that uh, shift register is connected to the input of the first shift register, this will act as a Johnson counter and this is the input sequence that it will go through. So yeah guys, that this is how the flip flop works and I hope you guys understand it. Alright guys, so here I have the circuit uh, design set up on a breadboard and I am using two 8-bit shift registers <clears throat> and a 555 timer uh, IC. As you can see on the oscilloscope I have that I'm uh, generating a square wave and the amplitude of the square wave is 5 volts <clears throat> and also you can change the speed of the clock cycle with that 10 kilo ohm resistor that you see over there and by turning that knob. <clears throat> so I have two switches over here guys. This switch right here, this uh, switch is used to give the circuit either a 1 or a 0 and this switch right here opens the connection of this switch with the circuit or closes the connection of this switch with the circuit. So when you turn, when you want to turn the circuit into a Johnson counter, you basically open this switch and then you know set the input here to 1 or 0 and then turn the switch on for a second and then close it and then the LEDs will cycle through that cycle. So let's begin. Right now I'm giving it a series of zeros and uh, the LEDs are off. So I'm going to give it ones now and the LEDs will turn on. There we go. I'm going to give them zeros again and they turn off. I'm going to give them a series of zeros and ones now, so here we go. 
as you can see they turn off now I'm going to turn it into a Johnson counter so I'm going to open this connection right here and set this to 1 and now I'm going to open it for a while and then close it now you can see there's a cycle through that's uh, you know they cycle through this and they keep uh, filling up once they're all turned on I'm going to open the switch again and set the input to 0 and then give them one or two zeros so now they have all turned on I'm going to close the connection it's closed I'm going to set this to zero and then open it for a small amount of time and then close it there we go and it's going to cycle through it until it fills up there we go I'm going to do this again so guys this is the circuit turned into a Johnson counter let's just give it all zeros now there we go and uh, guys, about this oscilloscope, I have a timeless video of it and how I, you know, assemble it. So guys, go ahead and watch that video as well. And now we'll get on to the circuit building. All right, guys, so this is the plan for the circuit diagram. Uh, I mean, this is a project box that I bought for this project. And what I have decided to do is, you know, uh, I'll drill holes over here and fit all the 16 LEDs. And then here, I'll put the switches. So the 10 kilo ohm, you know, resistor, the two switches that control the circuit and uh, after I drill them I'll show you how okay, it looks. So after drilling this is how the box looks and uh, I have 16 holes for the LED I have three holes for the switches and one uh, hole right here for the 10 kilo ohm resistor one switch will be used to turn uh, on and off the circuit so you know that's uh, why I've included it here and what I'm going to do now is you know these holes I've cut them short uh, I've cut them small on purpose because the LED will not fit in from you know here so what I'm just going to do is add the wires from the top and just glue it in like that and this will give us you know a better effect alright guys so after you know gluing the LEDs in and adding the switches this is how it looks and it looks really good so I'm just going to you know add some colorful tape on the top and uh, I just hot glued it right now and soldered all the negative wires together so now we're going to get to the perf board part. Alright guys, so I'm set to go. I basically cut this small piece uh, from this perf board because I only needed this much. And I'm going to solder the chips now. So let's begin. Alright guys, just an update, as you can see I have just completed the 555 timer circuit and now I'm going to do the uh, circuit for the ship registers. Guys, so I have finally completed the circuit and here is the completed perf board. It took me like 2 hours probably to solder all this in and it was a very painstaking process but I'm glad that it's done. I have tested it and it actually works. So now I'm going to put it all together and then I'm going to show you how this looks after adding the tapes and all that and the labels to the buttons. Alright guys, so this is the completed product and uh, I have decorated it and uh, added labels and also I have used a power supply and you know it gives you 200 milliamperes and 4.8 volts output. Anything, any voltage between 4.8 to 5 volts would be fine. So let me show you how this works now. So I'm turn it on. And this is the power button. So right now it's off. I'll turn it on. There we go. And uh, right now it's on zeros. So I'm going to give it all zeros. I'm going to turn this button on because this uh, button closes the connection of this switch with the circuit. So I'm going to give it ones. There we go. And I'm going to give it zeros. One zeros, one zeros, and now I'm going to turn this off right now, and I'm going to increase the clock speed a bit. Let me just keep this on and uh, give it some ones. Okay. Now, since this sequence is going, I'm gonna give it. Uh, I'm gonna increase the clock speed now with this. So let me just. All right. 
So now if I turn it clockwise, it will increase the clock speed. And if I turn it the other way around, it's going to decrease the clock speed. So now you can see that I'm turning it the other way around and it's decreasing the clock speed. Let me decrease it further. See the clock speed has decreased. So this is how it works and uh, I'm really happy with the final product. Alright guys, this is now the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching me and for your continuous support. I will be making more videos in the future and uh, don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Bye.